In this video, we'll talk about highlighting duplicates using conditional formatting. So uh, in Google Sheets, unlike Excel, there is no built-in functionality in conditional formatting to just highlight duplicates, at least not uh, at the point of filming this video. So if I uh, go under format and conditional formatting after highlighting this, I go under different rules that are available. You'll see there is no rule for highlighting duplicates. So how can we actually accomplish that? So uh, the nice thing is that conditional formatting can be done using a formula. And the idea is that you're going to have a logical test. And if the logical test returns true, then it's going to color the cell. If it returns false, it's not going to color the cell. Now, if you don't know what I mean by that, just uh, hold with me and you'll understand in just a little bit. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm just going to try to highlight in this column everything that's a duplicate in a different color using conditional formatting. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is create a formula. So I'm going to start with an equal sign. And I guess I'll put it right here in G column. Although if I do it in age, it's not going to make any difference. I'm just going to keep it tight here uh, on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead with an equal sign and go ahead and type a function called count if. It's a conditional count function. And what I'm going to do, the first thing in the counted function is going to be the range. So I'm going to highlight the entire range of items where I'm checking for duplicates right here. Now, because I'm very used to locking this, I'm going to press F4. Now, uh, not, uh, well, in this case, actually, it's, it's an important step. We want to do that. So we'll go ahead and lock that range right there. So uh, we'll go ahead and hit comma. Now, this uh, second thing is the criteria. So in this range, what do we want to count? So we want to count if in that range there is another item that matches the item that is in current row. So the item that's in current row is going to be this A2 cell. So uh, what we will be checking if there is any other uh, items with this exact name in this range. And if there are, we're going to get a count of how many it is. If there is only one, we're going to get one, which is going to be just this one. If there are more, it's going to give us a higher count. So let's go ahead and hit enter. So I'm getting a two. So apparently there are two. So one, two. Yeah, we can see them. Now I can go ahead and copy this formula down. It went a little too far there. So I'll go with a double click. So it handles it for me. So you can see we get two of these. We got one of these. We have two again because it's the same thing as the one this one on top we have three of this nike air max and so on right two of these apparently and so on now uh, basically what we're uh, getting here is that everything that's one it's unique we only have one of these everything that's higher than one which is two or three or four or really any other number it means it has a duplicate so how can we convert this to become true or false? Well, it's going to be easy. As I said, everything that's higher than one, right? It's a duplicate. So uh, what I'm going to do is just go back to my formula and just make this a logical test. So, so far, this formula returns me the number that I want to have, which will be one, two, three, whatever it is. Now, I want to check if it's higher than one. So I'm going to ask if cell is this higher? So I'm going to go to this greater than symbol and then one. So you can see it's already telling me true. Yes, it's higher than one. I'm going to hit enter. So you'll see how it says true. Now every one is going to become false and every other number should now say true because if it's higher than one, it's going to say true. So let me copy this down and you can see the results. See true, false, true, true because they have duplicates and false. So now I made a formula that returns true or false. So every true 
is a duplicate. And every false is a unique item. And because we have a formula that returns true and false, we can use that formula for conditional formatting. So uh, which formula do I want to use? I want to use the first one on top here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this formula, the first one on top. I'm going to hit escape. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight the range starting from the top because I'm using the top formula. So I'm going to go from here, go all the way down. And you can see how the active highlight itself is still that first one up there. So it's important not to highlight the one on top, right? The product name because, well, that's not a part of our data. It's the label. So I'm going to go under format, go under conditional formatting. And here, well, that's the range that needs to get conditional formatting. Now the format cells, if I'm going to go all the way, scroll the way down and go custom formula. And the formula is going to be the formula we had in the first cell. So you can already see how it's highlighting it, it, it in green. If you don't like the green color, you can obviously change it to a different color. You can even go under custom format here and apply your own formatting. I'm fine with this red, whatever that color is. I don't really care about how it's colored. It's really the functionality you care about. So I'm going to go ahead and click done. And that should do it. Now we have conditional formatting. So everything that's a duplicate is highlighted in red. Now it's important to note that that's not really tied to our formulas here. We're making these formulas to make it easy for us to understand how to use that to make it work for our conditional formatting. Now there it is. It's all here. Now this is completely dynamic as are all conditional formatting. So if I go ahead and change this to the same name, you'll see it goes in red because it's a duplicate now. I'm going to undo that. So we got back to this. Now, this is nice. This is the default functionality for highlighting duplicates in Excel, which just highlights duplicates in a single column, which you have duplicate values. Now, what if we wanted to check if there is a duplicate in this entire row? So we want to check if the entire row is a duplicate. Because right now, if we look at this row, and we look at this row, while a lot of columns are the same value, the size is different. So these are not duplicates if we're considering a duplicate to be the entire row being the same, right? So how can we do this with conditional formatting? So first of all, I'm going to undo a few steps to undo my conditional formatting. Start from the beginning. So now this is going to be a little more complicated to do. So the first thing I'm, uh, we need to do, we need to have a grid of the same size and to be frank with you the size even doesn't matter if you can make it work for two columns or three columns yeah that's good to go it's gonna work for all columns but right now I'm gonna make it the I'm gonna try to kind of keep it simple so we have one two three four five six columns so the grid on the right one two three four one, two, three, four, five, six, right? I'm going to go ahead and let's add some borders here so it looks like a grid, although we don't need it, but we'll just keep it there. So what we want is a formula that's going to get us trues and falses as we drag through all of the cells in the right places. So when we have a duplicate row, the entire row should say true. And when we have a non-duplicate row, the entire row should say false. So how do we get this? Where? Uh, we get this using array formulas. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, some product function in this case. And in our sum product function, we need an array. Uh, and uh, the array is going to check whether it's in the array or not, right? Kind of, that's the same thing we did with our countif. So we'll be doing countif basically using some product. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and first of all, create the range. So we're trying to check not in a single column, but as combined all columns together in our data. 
So the way I'm going to accomplish that, I'm going to go ahead and create an array here. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the first column. Well, not that way, but the accurate way. So that's our first column from A2 through A17. Looking good. So F4 on that. I could probably wait and do the lockings later, but I'm going to do this ampersand to combine because what I'm going to do, I'm going to combine these columns together to create one value out of those. And that way I'm going to check for the entire row. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F4 again to lock that. Another ampersand. We're going for the next column. Pretty sure you get it at this point. So we have to really pick all the columns where we have to check for duplicates since we're checking in all of them. I really need in all of them. Now I need all of these locked. So I'm going to highlight all of this and press F4. It's going to lock all of those. So now that's that. Now in this array that we have, we are trying to check if the it's the same as the first item we had similar to how we did the con count if condition right so first of all to keep this together i'm going to just wrap this around parentheses this around the entire array and i'm going to ask is it equal to and we're going to create now another array and i'm going to put parentheses to again separate this to make this hopefully more in, uh, easy to understand so i'm going to do this and this and this and this and this and this this will create one row a b c d e f a b c d e f right so that's uh, gonna create uh, a logical test with trues and falses. Now, the thing with some product formula is that some product formula cannot really handle uh, trues or falses. What it can handle is numbers. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to close that parenthesis for our sum product. Now, the way we're going this right here, this logical test, that it's asking if this entire row combined is the same as this array of rows we have. So it's gonna check against each one of these rows to see if it's true and false. It's gonna basically return trues and falses. Now, the thing is that we don't need trues or falses, we need ones and zeros. And the way we're gonna do it, I'm going to wrap that entire expression of true or falses in parentheses and put double negative in front of it like that so some product double negative and then we have our expression so i'm going to go ahead and hit enter you see it already returns one you can see right there right and that's accurate because as we said this is this shouldn't be considered a duplicate because we this is different the size is there uh, 9 and 11 and a half for the other one so let's send this down and see how it works so for this one it says we have three so we have this one we have this one that is correct that's exactly the same and we have this one so that's a duplicate that makes sense now this one also says we have another one which is just two and if we look, it is actually the same item. So it's a duplicate. So that's good. So now we're getting ones like we needed for everything that's, uh, you know, not a duplicate is a unique item. And we're getting a higher number if it's a duplicate. And again, similar to how we did with our counted function, now we need to convert this numbers, which is ones and threes. Funny how, how we're converting trues or falses to ones and zeros before for our sum product. But now we're actually getting the opposite trues and falses. So I'm going to again ask, is this greater than 1? And no, that's going to say false. And if I drag down, 
it's going to say false, 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 true. If it's a duplicate, true, it's a duplicate, true, it's a duplicate. Now this works for this one column, but the trick is that we need this to work if even if I drag this formula to the right. So this, the entire row, including the first one needs to be say false, but when it's true, it also needs to say true. But in this case, you can see how, uh, this one says true, but all the other ones still say false. We need them to say true for this to work. So the, what happens here is because we didn't lock the columns for this criteria we've made here. As we're pulling the formula to the right, it moves from column A, it was going from column A all the way to F, right? Now it's move, uh, moving from A to B and from F to G. So we're not really combining the right items. And our fix for this is going to be to go back to our original formula and we will need to lock all the columns in our criteria range now. So dollar sign here, dollar sign here for B column, dollar sign for C column. So I'm locking all the columns, which is the text like A, B, C, D, E, F, right? But I'm not locking the rows because I needed to move to the next row to check against the next item and so on. So I'm gonna hit enter, that's our false. I'm gonna drag this down, that's my formula. And then I'm gonna drag this to the right to make sure that this works. So now you can see how the whenever it's not a duplicate, it's false for the entire row. Whenever it is a duplicate, it's true for the entire row. So if I can get this to this, that means I got a formula that will work for conditional formatting. So I'm gonna go ahead at this point and again, find the first one, go inside of this formula, go ahead and highlight the entire formula and Control C or Command C to copy it. Hit Escape to get out of it. I don't want to change the formula. At this point, I'm going to highlight the entire range of items. I'm going to go under Format, Conditional Formatting. And again, I'm going to change Format Cells F to Custom Formula Is. Paste my formula in the box. You can already see how we're getting nice highlighting in the background. Change it to red color. Again, feel free to do custom and experiment and make something nice out of it. Hit done. And now, X out of this box, we can see that everything that's a duplicate for the entire row is being highlighted in our conditional formatting color. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that whole thing from here. Now, obviously, if you wanted this to be more dynamic, uh, because you're possibly adding, planning to add more data here and check conditional formatting, you want your range to be more than going all the way to A17, you may want to go until a point where you think that's going to be the end of your data or it's going to be the max amount of rows in your data if you're not going to have a max amount you can remove uh, the final rows like the 17s that i have you can remove them and just keep the a's to those if we do that that will work too uh, i did show this in a few videos already so ho ho watch those if you're not familiar with what i'm talking about here that's pretty much it so at this point we can just go ahead and delete this because we were just doing this just to make it easy for us to understand how this actually works and our condition and formatting is in place now and it works and now if I go here and change this to 9 that should make the entire entire row identical to this other one it will highlight it in red and our conditional formatting works as you can see and and that's it for our conditional formatting for duplicates video.